Hi, I'm Dr. Kühne. I'm a primary care physician with a focus in preventive health. I started this channel to help people make decisions about many aspects of their day-to-day -day living that can significantly impact their health. And many of these topics came up in conversations with my patients. I have a clinic where I help people with weight loss and other things. And there was always uh, interesting topics that came up and misconceptions. And as we worked through them, you know, um, I did a lot of research on my own and I found that a lot of the things that I learned in medical school really are either antiquated or really incorrect, especially when it comes to preventive health and nutrition and other aspects that we can do to prevent disease. So the traditional model of medicine kind of has been, well, you have someone who becomes sick you know, at some point in their life, then they come to see you and you treat them either with a medication or with surgery or whatever intervention you can do. That's fine. But I think that's really a disservice to most people because now we have a lot of knowledge of the things that as we expose ourselves chronically uh, to, these, to these things, we become sick. And how do we prevent that from happening? And I think that's much more important than waiting for someone to become sick, put them on a medication for the rest of their life and then they're done. And it kind of started with myself. So after I graduated from medical school and started working and um, you know, we started a family, I gained weight and became more sluggish and tired and I actually I developed insulin resistance. So I was never at the point where I would call myself really obese. However, my waistline had gone from like a 31 to a 36 inch waist. So that's, I mean, five inches increase in my waistline. That's a lot of visceral fat that's sitting around the organs. That was very inflammatory and that's how I felt. I felt lousy. Um, so a lot of issues came up where I didn't feel so good, gained weight, um, didn't have the energy really when I was working out anymore. So there were huge changes that I noticed. And um, then when I did lab work on myself, I noticed that my hemoglobin A1C was at 5.8, which is really at the upper limit of normal or even at the point of early mild insulin resistance. My Cholesterol was slightly elevated, but that's not even the worst part. The bad part was that the factors like my triglycerides, they were very, that was very high and that's a big problem. And my HDL was low. So I had issues with my cholesterol. I had, uh, I would say, an early insulin resistance and I just felt lousy. And I did more research. Well, how can I change these parameters? Because I followed what I learned in school, the traditional Western medicine diet, you know, you calorie restrict, you know, you eat healthy carbohydrates, you eat low fat. And that came about kind of in the, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, this was a hypothesis. And as I dug more into it, well, what was this based on? It was based on food questionnaires and it was based on studies that were never really proven. Um, so a lot of these um, suggestions and the food pyramid that was devised ultimately were based on, you know, really science that has never been profoundly supported yet we were doing it and so i started after a lot of research for myself on a ketogenic diet that helped me a lot now i don't put all my, my patients on the ketogenic diet it fits for some people for some it doesn't but i tell you it made a huge difference for me i started eating only healthy fats so i cut out all the bad fats i cut down my carbohydrate intake significantly um, and you know the change and, and of course healthy proteins and what I noticed is a big change. I lost a lot of the fat that I had gained in my midsection, got back to a 31 waist and felt tremendously better and also my blood markers got better. My hemoglobin A1c came down to 5.3. That was a lot better. My cholesterol while the total number stayed about the same all of a sudden my triglycerides were down and my HDL was very high. It was over 80 and that's actually very good. So I felt a lot better, I did more research, and as I, you know, dug more into this, I also realized that what we learn in medical school in terms of nutrition is very limited. We had about five hours of lectures on this, and, and that's about it, and here's, your food, and here's your food pyramid, and that was it. So learning this and discussing questions with my patients then led me to, well, you know, this is a very important thing how we can keep people healthier. There are many things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis that can absolutely negatively impact our long-term health. And if we understand these and we can make changes, I think we can all live a healthier and more productive life. So I really would say as, you know, with this channel, my goal is that together we can really come up with clear answers 
that simplify our decisions in our health today and in the years to come as we you know as we become older and um, a lot of times uh, research articles might be very convoluted and complicated and it's my goal with this channel to take the science and simplify it and make it applicable really. How do I, on a day-to-day -day basis, when I go to the grocery store or how I prepare my food at home or even from working out or cutting out certain uh, uh, toxins in my environment um, and also, you know, like in terms of uh, workouts, all these kind of things that determine our day-to-day -day health uh, are interesting topics, topics that I'm discussing in this channel and uh, hope that it will lead to um, all of us having healthier and more productive lives.